Patrick, thanks for being here with us today. Well, thank you for having me. I'm learning so much today. Oh, great. So so I'm, I'm really interested. You know, you and I have worked together for, for many years between the Dempsey Center and Cancer Support. Right. Right? Almost 12 years now. I yeah. think we're getting into our 12th year. Yeah, that's right. I'd love to know you watching the evolution of the science that we've talked about, you know, the, the meeting that we've gone to over the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. What are you most excited about when you think about what you're hearing around personalized medicine? What you're hearing is collaboration. Yeah. You're hearing a team approach as to uh, getting away from the silo approach, which I think is very important. There's pushback in that, mm -hmm. but I think in that discussion, you're moving forward very quickly. Um, and that's exciting to me. Also, too, I think the kind of the work that we're doing to stand up, you know, to, to protect the patient mm -hmm. and to empower the, the patient is very important, key component. And it's clear to me that the work that we are doing mm -hmm. together and uh, other like-minded centers is that it has to happen at the moment of diagnosis. Mm -hmm. That if you're waiting for the test result, we're coming out of this last session. And my takeaway from that is it, we should be there as soon as that diagnosis comes in to help people manage their emotions, prepare them for the, you know, to get that result back. And that could be anywhere from seven days to 21 days mm -hmm. in really controlling the mind, the fear, the anxiety to help them stay strong going into whatever procedure, whatever um, medication they might go to. Mm -hmm. So so talk about, and, and you and I share something. Your mother was diagnosed with cancer. Yes. And my father was uh, diagnosed with cancer. Yes. We and so both lost our parents to we cancer. We did. We did. So what, when you thought about getting into this world and really turning your lemons into lemonade, to use right, that yeah, phrase, right? Idea, yes. uh, what made you think about going into the psychosocial space versus the cure? Uh, so many people sort of go into, I'm going to find a cure for this. What right. made you sort of think about the care? Because when I first got involved with the Breakaway from Cancer Initiative, it was a real light bulb for me. I'm like, I never thought about it before. You always mm -hmm. think about the research, the treatment, the doctors. You don't think about the social, psycho, psychological aspect of it. And I think that's something that really needs improvement. Mm -hmm. And it should go hand in hand. It should be anytime anybody's diagnosed universally, I think that should be happening. And that, to me, is what was like, okay, this is clearly what we need to be focusing on. Mm -hmm. There's a real lack of attention uh, in that department. Mm -hmm. And, and when you think about the elements of, of receiving care, right, just the very practical reasons. You know, right. I think that we start to think about the word psychosocial and we think about depression and anxiety, which was so important. But one of the things that, that, that I like to share is this concept of big data. And right. you think about we've got this big data, we can now mine data to say in 80% of the patients, if we do this, this will happen. You know, in 90% of the patients, if we use this molecular testing, this will happen. But where it all sort of falls apart is when you think about a person's attitudes, beliefs, and behaviors. Correct. Right? If I can't take my drug or if I can't get to my treatment center, there's a problem. There is a problem. Yeah. And I think it's like getting access to information. Like the last thing that, you know, so how do we get the word out to people mm -hmm. that they should ask these questions mm -hmm. in a way and, and be careful what kind of information that they're getting. How do you, how do you present them with the right package? How do you inform them in a way where they have the, uh, the right questions to ask when they go in, mm -hmm. which then empowers them, which gives them a sense of like, I'm not victimized here, I'm proactive in this. Right, right. How do you keep them off the internet when they shouldn't be on the internet? I, There's I time they should be, but when I, they shouldn't be. I think you, I think you have to uh, approach it in a different way. It's mm -hmm. like, you're gonna do what you're gonna do mm -hmm. and realize you're gonna have questions and some of it will take you down a rabbit hole that may not be healthy for you. And some things may be healthy for you, but just hold off a moment and let us give you the skills before you move forward to like, okay, here's what you should focus on. Here's the direction you should go and seek this information here. Mm -hmm. Which is hard. That's an incredibly disciplined yes. approach. And when you're that vulnerable, not knowing if you're going to survive this diagnosis, I think that that's going to be where the mindfulness comes in, where mm -hmm. yoga comes in, where nutrition comes in, all these other things that are outside what... Uh, a traditional medicine is, is a, uh, how they're combating this disease. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So let's um, let's finish this conversation okay. with just a moment of uh, a friend of ours. Okay. So I just want to talk about Catherine. Almost. Right. Yes. So you know when we reflect on, and, and I've known Catherine for for 20 years before we lost her yeah. um, recently, and um, I just think about how how grateful I am not only to have known her. Um, but for the contributions that she made um, when we think about personalized medicine. And, you know, she was a nurse when they developed Herceptin. Right. So when you think about one of the first medicines, you know, for personalized medicine, Catherine was at the forefront of that. And right. I know that she was a special person to you as well. well yeah, without her, I don't think the, the center would be where it is today mm -hmm. um, and the impact that we're making in our community and certainly the impact that we're making in, in rural Maine. Without her, you know, she was a fighter. Mm -hmm. And she really believed in what we were doing and, and championed that cause. 
and oncology nurses are very special. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're very strong, and they're on the front lines. And, yeah. uh, you know, uh, we miss her greatly. But I think her spirit is still very much alive mm -hmm. with us. Uh, there isn't a day that doesn't go by where we don't, with the staff or with the team, mm -hmm. think about her and, 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 and know that her voice is behind us. Mm -hmm. And she's here in spirit. And uh, literally, her spirit is still with us. 100%. In so many ways. So many ways. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and thank that's you. her legacy, I think, to us and yeah. to the, the rest of the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you very much.